Business ownership has never been hotter, but how do you do it? That's where I come in. Allow me to guide you on your journey. Welcome to Ion Franchise. This episode sponsored by SEO Samba. Empower your franchise with predictable results and AI-driven marketing. Coming up on this episode. I have the man, I have the guy, call him Oz if you will, behind the curtain, 700 million a year and heading to a billion in painting. So Mike, you must be a great painter. <laughs> Core values of Certipro and the Stone family. You heard it here first. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another fabulous episode of Ion Franchising, and I'm your host, Lance Gralick. So imagine getting into a franchise that purchases $100 million worth of paint, for example. Well, today, I have the man, I have the guy, call him Oz, if you will, behind the curtain at Certa Pro Painters, Mike Stone, President and CEO going to talk to the number one painting franchise in the world. Welcome, Mike. Thrilled to be here, Lance. Uh, excited to, to talk painting. And yes, we do buy a lot of paint from a, an incredible strategic partner, most of it from Sherwin-Williams. Uh, so yeah, uh, looking forward to our discussion. I love it. Well, thanks for being here. So Mike, my first question generally is, how the heck did you get into the world of franchising? Why? Yeah, so great question. Um, believe it or not, uh, an old college friend of mine uh, was running a student painting business back at the University of Iowa. So I'm a proud alumni, Hawkeye. Go Caitlin Clark, kick some butt out there <laughs> for the Indiana fever. Uh, so it. I went to the University of Iowa. My buddy Dan was running a painting business in the summer. Uh, he was a couple, uh, a couple years younger than me. Uh, I went off and started working for a custom home builder in Chicago, got a degree in business, uh, focus uh, on, on marketing. And he's, uh, he caught me, uh, you know, he's two years younger than me says, Hey, Mike, uh, I'm moving to San Diego. I was in Chicago and I'm going to go start this full-time painting business with a company called Serta Pro Painters. And I just had the worst winter ever in Chicago. And, and he said, you want to move to San Diego? And I said, yeah, I do want to move to San Diego. So I moved out to San Diego uh, with my Honda Accord and like $600 in my pocket 25 years uh, ago. And uh, he started this painting company. And in less than a year, I started doing sales for him. So I started out as a residential sales guy in a franchise. And very quickly, uh, I mean, you got to realize we were uh, the whole the whole business model was pretty infantile at the time where we've been around a little over 30 years. Uh, and we were one of the very first franchises to do over a million dollars in sales. Um, 25 years ago. Uh, 25 years ago. Right. So, uh, yeah, that that's kind of how I cut my teeth in franchise and working in a franchise. I did residential sales for a couple of years. We built a nice business, went into commercial sales, and then uh, met my beautiful wife, Kim, out there in San Diego. She was born and raised in Philly. We had our oldest son, Kyle, and she said, I really want to move back to Philly and have our kids near your family out in Jersey and my family in Philly. And so I joined the corporate team and started training the new franchises. And, and then from there, pretty much have had every role on the franchise or side and, and had most of the roles on the franchisee side. So that's kind of how I uh, cut my teeth in this business. And, and about six years ago, we were about a seven years ago, we were about a $300 million painting company. And the founder of the organization said, Mike, take us to a billion. And uh, you know, we're, we're well over 700 million now and we'll, we'll cross a billion in the next few years in painting. 700 million a year and heading to a billion in painting. So Mike, you must be a great painter. <laughs> well, no, uh, that's, uh, that's the first fallacy. None of our people uh, have any painting experience. Uh, uh, our franchise owners don't actually, even a lot of our sales force doesn't have a lot of painting experience. Uh, what they are, uh, we give them a, a business model uh, about how to run a professionally managed business uh, a big painting operation happens to be our widget, but it's really about customer experience, 
leadership development, building a great uh, company culture, living our core values. And we continue to attract uh, great talent, whether it's at the franchise uh, level or the, there's about 1,350 full-time staff members working for our franchise owners. And today it's July 10th. Uh, and we are swinging 5,000 paintbrushes today across North America, 5,000 people uh, representing our amazing brand across North America. Yeah, that's awesome. Mike, I got to jump in with this question early in this, in this podcast. So many franchises out there. You guys dominate and you're the number one painting franchise. There's plenty of competition on your heels, much smaller brands. The number one question I get, is Lance, how do I know if a franchise is right for me? So why Certipro compared to air conditioning or a handyman business or a power washing business? Tell me more. Yeah, so uh, great question. Uh, one, whenever you're looking at a franchise concept, you get the benefit of going in business for yourself, but not by yourself, right? That's a huge thing. So if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, you've got to find uh, a culture or a business that really uh, resonates with who you are as an individual. So uh, it starts in my mind, uh, why would you pick Certipro over someone else? It's rooted in our core values. And, and, and I can talk to you probably for an hour about uh, these aren't just words, there are how we behave and live. But why would you pick painting? versus air conditioning, versus mosquitoes, versus a, a handyman business. Well, rare if ever in your life uh, could you say, hey, there's $60 billion of opportunity in front of us. That's how much painting gets done in the US and Canada on an annual basis. I just told you, I'm only doing 700 million of that. So yeah. we have less than 2% market share. It's incredible fragmentation. So if you want a, a runway good. growth opportunity, Lance, I don't know anything that really offers that much uh, opportunity and, and wealth Love creation. It. No, that's awesome. So let's talk about what's the typical investment. And I want to roll right into who is it that is the ideal candidate for you uh, at Certipro? Okay, so uh, a startup business uh, could uh, vary in cost somewhere between $150,000 and $250,000, depending on your, your, your lifestyle. Because it does take about six months to, to get to start generating consistent cash flow so you can kind of maintain your, your lifestyle. So there are some living expenses you need to also take into consideration with that. But that's the investment. Uh, if you look at our item 19, uh, the, the average productivity is $2.1 million. Uh, you can go into all the details. We, we collect you know, 90% of the, the P&Ls from our franchisees. So we have really robust uh, profit and loss numbers as well. You know, I think- That's awesome. Well, yeah. wait, you're bringing up numbers. So let's speed up to the show me the money portion of this uh, podcast, which okay. is, you know, tell me about this blueprint. I know there's some sort of blueprint, formal or informal, to get franchisees to three and a half million a year. Yeah, so uh, one of the, the keys to, I think, that differentiates Certipro from a lot of other, uh, whether it's a painting concept or just any home or property services business, is you need a roadmap or a blueprint on how to scale your business and grow. What roles do I hire? What leadership skills do I need? Um, well, what's my marketing spend should be? Should I have a residential business and a commercial business? When do I make those transitions? Uh, what are, what is the uh, skill development? What's the operating manual for each of the roles? And so we have a, it's called the path and it's a roadmap or blueprint on how to go from zero uh, uh, really to seven and a half million dollars. That's kind of what the expectation is. And it used to be go to from zero to three million. But the reality is we have so many franchisees that have now uh, blown the doors off that uh, that there's a proof of concept in how to go from zero to much larger than that. And the proof isn't uh, just in, in hyperbole. It's all this path or roadmap or blueprint is, is rooted in our franchisees having developed all of the tools and the leadership skills necessary to get there. 
And that's the beauty of franchising is you take entrepreneurs, you, you have them use your business model, you refine it with great input and feedback, and then you make new standard operating procedures. And so that allows you to scale a business faster than you could do on your own, make more money. And then here's the key to it all, Lance, is everyone buys a business so they can eventually realize the equity the business produces. And every year we sell 20 of these businesses for a high multiple of EBITDA. And yeah. uh, that number, the multiplier keeps going up as our business keeps maturing. Love and it. It, we're attracting a higher level buyer who says, hey, maybe I want to diversify my portfolio and my investments. Yeah. And one of them could be franchising, right? Yeah. And you mentioned... You you mentioned seven million, and I know you have franchisees doing above ten million. That's right. Yeah, we we have uh, we'll have probably three franchisees cross fifteen million dollars this year, and uh, I mean fifteen about- million painting on a two hundred thousand dollar investment to fifty maybe if you're an expen- in an expensive state like California, right? That that's that's exactly right, and uh, yeah. If you're looking at business opportunity, like I said, incredible fragmentation. Uh, we're the largest player in our space. We are the only nationally or North America's only branded company because of uh, the amount of, we leverage a bunch of buying power through our marketing co-ops. So, um, I mean, we advertise with the New York Yankees and the Flyers and the Houston Astros and the Cubs and the Brewers and Utah Jazz and and you know we 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 spend money on radio and TV and serious satellite. So I mean, you're gonna get a brand out there that people know. Yeah. And uh, that that there's some peace of mind uh, when you're starting a business to know that people know who you are. That's awesome. So the ideal franchisee. Hmm. How do yeah. You let's know? get back to that. You, yeah. You how do you know? Question. How do you know who well, the ideal? You know who? And you can might you might want to answer it, Mike, as to who's not right for Serta Pro as well. Well, uh, uh, so you are going to be working with trades. Most of the people that uh, uh, that work in a sort of pro franchise at the painter level are are uh, of Hispanic or Latino descent. That's just the reality of our our painter workforce. They're amazing people, but they're they're from all walks of life. Uh, yep. Most of them are first generation immigrants. But the people who really have success running a sort of pro, we've done really well with kind of mid-level military people who put their 20 years in, maybe became a lieutenant, a captain, a major, uh, and and got their time in the military, 20 years, got a nice pension. They've got probably a little nest egg. They do really well. Um, A lot of uh, sales executives, mid-level managers from Fortune 500 companies who maybe got acquired and they've gone through a couple rounds of layoffs. They want to be in control of their future. Honestly, anyone who has an aptitude or energy around getting results through others and uh, can assertively lead, and uh, those are the people that are going to have a ton of success running our franchise. We don't want you to know a lot about painting. We'll teach you everything you need to know about the painting industry. You you don't want bad habits. We don't want a bunch of bad habits. That's why there's so much fragmentation in painting. And honestly, just to give you perspective, I told you, Lance, uh, 2.1 is an average Serta Pro, right? But the reality is, if you talk to Sherwin Williams, what is their average account? Their average account buys ten thousand dollars worth of paint, which means their average painter runs a hundred thousand dollar painting business. Yeah, we're twenty x that, twenty x what an average painter. So yes, I do not want painters. At all. I want people who want to get great results and leader and lead through others in a $60 billion a year industry. Yeah. I always tell my candidates, I said, if you cannot find value in the conversation with the brand that I connected you with, you're not with the right brand or you're not paying attention. You just told us all of this value, how you're going to do so much more than a typical painting brand, assuming you follow the system and follow the right path, right? Because there are people that don't, people that fail in a franchise. I know this. I've heard all the time. They don't follow the system. They don't hire great people. They don't follow up. They don't provide good customer service, right? Yep. Yeah. uh, Our our decisions are rooted in three strategic anchors, um, profitability or financial success, market share growth, 
and extraordinary brand experience. And you can't do one without the other two. One, financial success. We need our franchise owners to make money. Not just them, but we need their associates that work in their business to make money. We need their painters to make money. And hey, I'm in this for profit. Profit's not a four-letter word. The franchisor needs to make money so we can continue to invest right. in it as well. Market share. You can grow at double digits. Double digit growth every year is the expectation. If you and your market own 2% of the market, that means 98% of the painting is being done by someone else. You should be expecting uh, substantial growth year over year. And then, of course, you have to deliver extraordinary brand experience, customer service, because the best way to build a repeat and referral business is wowing your customers, creating raving fans at, at, at the uh, job level. And uh, there's nothing better than a repeat customer or a referral customer because they don't cost anything the second time around, right? Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your, within the selection process, because it's all about the people here, the people that the employees, the franchisees, when you're going through the process as a candidate, looking at CertiPro, talk a little bit about validation. I always explain to people how special the validation process can be to help you determine, do you have all the facts and figures and really understand what this takes, the work that's required to put this in, you know, to, to get this launched appropriately. And, and really, nobody wants surprises when they get into any business, especially a franchise. So what does validation look like? Do you give them a list of all the franchisees and say, call whoever the heck you want? How do you guys do that? Well, uh, in, in our FDD is every single franchise owner's uh, contact information. And it's probably the thing that I'm most proud of uh, as the CEO of the company is when a prospect calls and I said, you can call anyone you want. Uh, and the best question is, if you had it to do over again, would you would you buy the business? And, uh, you know, 99% of them say I would do it uh, over and over again. And even the ones that have struggled or failed, which, you know, we only have three less than 3% that don't succeed. I mean, think about it. Most businesses that start up probably 50% fail. But why you buy a franchise is to mitigate that risk. And so uh, when people... Uh, there's a lot of introspection with our franchise owners and they say, you know, it just wasn't right for me. I didn't really, maybe I didn't like the contracting business or they, usually there's a personal trauma in their life, a divorce, a death in the family, uh, something else happened, health, health scare. That's usually why they don't succeed because yeah. to be, to be frank, Lance, we're very selective. We want people who deliver on their promises we want people who take pride in what they do. We want people who practice continuous improvement. We want people who embrace the possibilities. Um, we want people who respect the individual. Those are the, those are kind of, the, that's the DNA of the people we're looking to select to be franchise owners. And if those core values that I just rattled off resonate with you, well, then you're going to say, well, CertiPro is a great home. Frankly, those words I just shared, that's how I raise my children. That's how I live my life. And let me tell you, it, when tough, tough decisions have to be made, it's very easy to make a hard decision when you can bump it up against your core values. Core values of CertiPro and the Stone family. You heard it here first. I love it. <laughs> Mike, talk about margins. Every franchise, prospective franchisee that I speak to as they're going through the process, they're hurting their head trying to figure out how much money can I make? And very few franchisors are ever disclosing margins, but yep. talk about that for you in CertiPro and, and how people are determining what these great margins are. Okay, so one of the things I told you about was our strategic anchors, and a, a, it's, a, it's a triangle, it's an equilateral triangle. Certainly at the top of that is financial success, which speaks to profitability. And uh, they're, they're, they're essentially two costs in a paint job. Paint and labor, <laughs> not rocket science. It's paint and labor. Paint tends to be 10 to 15% of the job. Now there's always some jobs that it's higher, but it's tend to, it tends to be 10 to 15%. And labor tends to be around 30 to 35%. So 
Uh, we expect our franchise owners to find a way to make between 45 and 50% gross margin on a paint job, right? Pretty healthy margin. Uh, Heck yeah. <laughs> now, then you have to pay for all your overhead, right? And we we expect overhead uh, for a business to run anywhere from 28 to 38% in overhead. Uh, so uh, it, our, our franchise uh, P&L collection shows EBITDA from 12 to kind of 16%. And there, there are reasons why you're going to reap and there are reasons why you're going to sow. Uh, are you going to be investing more capital to scale faster, to get over certain thresholds? You may, may be willing to take a little bit less in EBITDA. Right. Yeah. But those that those are real numbers. This is honest. And hey, you know, a two point one million dollar average productivity shooting for, you know, a low end of 10 and a high of, you know, 16 percent EBITDA is not uncommon. Uh, obviously, we have data that backs that up and supports that. This is not a, uh, uh, you know, I'm not disclosing this to a client, but they can find yeah. that validation out when they call our franchisees. And that'll support what I just said. And also on a on a low investment and talk about the fact that, you know, you learn during COVID, if you didn't know before, this business can be done remotely. Well, actually, it's one of the most remarkable things that happened uh, to our business. So imagine March 14th, what was that, 2020? 2020. March 14th, 2020, and half of the United States or more literally shut down. And... Uh, that's the worst time of year to shut down a painting business. Uh, we're in our peak marketing. We're spending massive quantities of dollars. Everyone gets the, their house estimated. We book so much of our revenue between March and July. Uh, and then we spend the summer and the spring producing a lot of our exterior work. We figured out how to, to complete 5,000 remote estimates. You know how you and I are talking? I'm looking at the background behind you. Yeah. Uh, if you were to whip your camera around, give me the rough dimensions of your room or do it on on your 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 device here with FaceTime. We did 5000 estimates, landed 2500 paint jobs and never met the people face to face, showed up at their homes with a thing that said, this is our health, safety and cleaning basics. This is how we're going to produce your paint job and yeah. and absolutely minimize risk to you. And, and we thrived during COVID. I mean, thrived during that period of time. What it also taught us is, holy cow, we have amazing technology. At our fingertips, we know what our salespeople are doing every single day. We can manage crews remotely. We can get paint delivered to job sites. I had franchise owners all over North America running their businesses and never having to be in their business. And so what it did teach us is if you hire great people, have really good accountability, great, good leadership skills. Frankly, once you've kind of learned how to walk and chew gum running this business, you can continue to scale and grow this business and lead your business from anywhere. I mean, the world has changed today, Lance. You can sign your payroll checks from Dubai if you want to, or on the beaches in Bali, right? <laughs> You're well-traveled. I like those places. Okay. So, so, Mike, you know, there's a lot of discussion in the world of franchising. Almost every phone call I have with somebody, and I have one right after you, people are going to ask, well, Mike, I want to join Serta Pro, but I have a job that I don't want to quit yet. Can I do that with Serta Pro? How do I do that? Talk about that because there are brands out there, quite a few, that say you're not going to join our brand unless you're full time in this business. I think initially, uh, that's a fair question. There, there's a lot of risk with starting starting a business from scratch without being fully invested in it. I wouldn't recommend that at Serta Pro. Look, if you were buying one of our bigger businesses that was professionally managed already as a resale, and you wanted to keep another job or have a, the income stream come, coming in, you probably could pull that off because it's already got the infrastructure in place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's no steadfast rule on it. The, the bottom line is uh, to, to start a business, you need to give it all the energy possible. But a resale, and we do 20, 25 resales a year 
with that's got some infrastructure, some cash flow, some staff, you probably could keep a business, but you're going to have to, you know, pay attention and learn the business. Yeah. You know, I, I would say those are all one off discussions and unique yeah. situations, depending on, you know, are you an entrepreneur and or are you working in a Fortune 500 company that's requiring you to, you know, those those are different types of scenarios, Lance. Yeah. Got it. Small business owner who owns a couple other franchise concepts and uh, is probably there's a sweet spot for that with Serta. Got it. So let's talk a little bit about training and marketing. So you select the franchisee. They get in. Talk about how the training works. Is yeah. there a learning uh, management yeah. system? How much is hands on? Yeah. Yeah. So so when you buy your Serta Pro, there's a five week uh, kind of onboarding process. Uh uh, th four of those weeks are kind of uh, virtual training through Serta Pro University. And there's a one week in person training. And then uh, that kind of happens in the middle. And then you go through and you you've launched your business. Then you come back about a month later and you go through the second half of development owner school. And then you come back uh, usually about six months later and we do your commercial uh, training. So we have three live training events anywhere from five days to two days. And then there's, you know, kind of five weeks of kind of virtual and online training. I mean, that's not full time. That's that's kind of like maybe eight to 10 hours a week with your checklist. You get a dedicated onboarding general manager, a business consultant that works with a very small number of people uh, as your coach to get you up to speed, you get a direct marketing success manager. So you get your own business coach and a marketing success manager. Love it. Their job is to launch your business with you. And, and then obviously you get all the trainers, the live in-person training people and their staff uh, as well to kind of ensure that you're positioned for optimal success out of the gate. Yeah. What? So what's the secret sauce in launching on the marketing side to, to make sure, as you said earlier, that, that people are not just throwing money into this, you know, a year and a half down the road. Yeah. I mean, first off, I mean, why you buy a, a, a franchise is you have a proven business model and we have uh, we have a, a rigorous and disciplined marketing ap approach. Your website gets uh, built. You, you know, there's a whole marketing uh, program that you deploy that starts, you know, once you turn your business on, starts generating residential and commercial leads to to pe for people in your market that want to paint. And believe it or not, a Sherwin-Williams doesn't sell $20 billion worth of paint. Uh, uh, and the $60 billion painting industry, by the way, that's just res re that's just the repaint space, not all the new construction paint, our sweet spot for the high margin painting. So there's just demand is through the roof out there. It, it's a matter of turning it on in your market. And, and that's why you buy a franchise because we know how to do it from a digital assets and how to, how to, how to have your online presence when in the marketplace, how to direct market, the signage, the vehicles, the, you know, the branding, all of that, the co-op all play a role in uh, really setting you up for success. So uh, that's not, not, not the hard part of this game. Yeah. No, and not to mention all the sports arenas and all the relationships that you have. I mean, you got some some great, huge branding out there, which is a, a major advantage. So, Mike, you've been amazing. Serta Pro sounds absolutely amazing for so many people to consider. Final thoughts, final words of wisdom for the audience today? I would say this. Uh if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, you get the opportunity to go into business uh, for yourself. Franchising and CertiPro allows you to do it with somebody to support you every step of the way. And rare if ever in your life will you get an opportunity uh, that's right in front of us where we're the largest player in our space by easily a factor of three and we own 2% of the market, the $60 billion space. So our runway of growth and for a relatively small investment uh, capital, really, it, it is a phenomenal opportunity. Uh, the people here love supporting our franchisees' success. And we have a proven way uh, to ensure when you're ready to realize your equity, we do 20 to 25 resales every year. And frankly, we even buy some of the, the businesses back ourselves as the franchisor. So 
because uh, we see the opportunity to scale and grow even further. So love that's that. my final thoughts there. I, I love the brand. I love the opportunity. And, you know, we'd love to see you uh, learn more about Serta Pro. Visit us at SertaPro.com and check out franchising. Or reach out to me and I'll uh, give you some additional scoop and guide you in the process. Mike Stone, President, CEO of Serta Pro. You're awesome, my friend. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Lance. I really enjoyed the discussion. My pleasure. If you're ready to talk about franchise opportunities, hit the link below to schedule a call. My services are free. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for listening.